Could the U.S. Embassy in Belarus's warning to U.S. citizens from August 21st and the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin be connected? I'm Dr. K. I'm a political scientist that looks at how information is shared, and that includes the information policies of governments and their ministries. The U.S. Department of State is responsible for America's foreign policy and foreign relations, and they apply a no double standard policy to important security threat information. That means that they share the same information with the official U.S. community, meaning embassy employees and their families, as it does with the non-official U.S. community, like Americans living in a country. If a post or embassy has information about potentially dangerous situations, it evaluates if the potential danger could also affect private U.S. citizens or nationals, and it shares that information creating the same standard of information availability. If you'll think back to January and February 2022 in Kyiv and the rest of Ukraine, first, U.S. Embassy families were given the option of leaving. The next step was the withdrawal of non-essential employees, all while the U.S. Embassy was urging its citizens to leave Ukraine. Many Americans and Ukrainians were watching the U.S. Embassy's social media channels for information. And the no double standard policy just makes sense because anywhere that there's a significant embassy presence, the public would clearly notice if tens, if not hundreds of U.S. children were leaving schools, canceling their music classes, and so on. The no double standard policy simply opens a door to information that already has a window in it and that people are looking through. However, the U.S. Embassy does differentiate between security information and intelligence. On February 12th, 2022, the tone of the U.S. Embassy in Kyiv's warning to citizens sharpened. The U.S. Secretary of State personally urged Americans to leave Ukraine in a press conference, and the U.S. Embassy was calling Americans that it knew were still in the city. The tone was a lot like the warning issued in Belarus on August 21st, 2023. We know now that U.S. intelligence had pinpointed the time frame for a Russian invasion of Ukraine to February 16th to 20th. It would be a safe assumption that between February 11th and February 12th, 2022, the U.S. shared some of its intelligence with other countries. Because on February 12th, both the German and French embassies ordered the departure of their staff and, of course, families. I was on the road on February 12th. I personally saw two columns driving west with U.S. Embassy employees. And just eight days after the press conference, the invasion of Ukraine started. On Now, on August 21st, 2023, there was a similar warning in gravity and tone for U.S. citizens in Belarus. Two days later, on August 23rd, Yevgeny Prigozhin, the founder of the private military company whose mercenaries relocated to Belarus after a failed coup, was killed in a plane crash leaving Moscow. At the end of July, Ukraine's state border guard estimated that there were about 5,000 Wagner mercenaries in Belarus. Did the U.S. have intelligence about the plan to kill Yevgeny Prigozhin? How could the death of the Wagner mercenary leader further threaten the security situation in Belarus? Remember, the Belarusian president, Alexander Lukashenko, promised Prigozhin and all of his Wagner soldiers safe haven in Belarus. With Prigozhin, a longtime friend of Lukashenko now assumed dead, will Putin not have to worry about Wagner battalions preventing him from exerting a little bit more influence over Belarus? Will Putin try to take over the Wagner mercenaries and direct their energy again at Ukraine? Lithuania's president, in a statement on August 24th, said his country, which borders Belarus, is no safer after Prigozhin's death. If this situation mirrors the one in Ukraine in February 2022, there may be more news coming soon.